Kingdom Come, Deliverance, an epic adventure in the Holy Roman Empire. Slavering dragons blotting out the sun, mystical elves brandishing old enchanted blades, sci-fi blaster wars with distant alien worlds, and an androgynous adolescence outfitted in furious outfits with an unpractical quantity of zippers and buckles are all common sights in role-playing games. These are some of the first pictures that come to mind when people think about their favorite game genre. That's why Kingdom Come Deliverance, a highly realistic game from Warhorse Studios, is such a notable phenomenon. Sure, it's not the first game to forego fantasy and science fiction tropes in favor of a historically accurate setting, but few have done so with such a pleasant end result. It is set in an open-world environment, and it's played from a first-person perspective. It has succeeded magnificently in utilizing a classless roleplay. Any review of Kingdom Come Deliverance should definitely start with a disclaimer that this is not a game for the easily tilted. Life is difficult, and in its attempt to be as realistic as possible, this game does not shy away from completely smashing the player, especially in the first half. It's not that things get easier later on, but having more time to get to know the game's many systems and level up talents allow players to face new difficulties on a more level playing field. Practice is the key word here. And although it won't make things perfect, there are still plenty of hurdles in the game's later stages. It will at least allow players to improve their skills. This isn't a game that's difficult just for the purpose of being difficult. Everything is done in the name of authenticity. Players assume the role of young Henry of Scalitz, an ordinary blacksmith's son living a modest existence in the Kingdom of Bohemia today's Czech Republic. Around the beginning of the 15th century, Henry spends his days helping his father at the forge, flirting with the local tavern wench, and getting into mischief with his friends. Henry has no formal weapons training, no money, and only a cursory knowledge of horseback, as befits his position in his genuine medieval society. If it sounds like the early hours of the game severely limit players' abilities, it's because they do. Kingdom Come mostly focuses on the role-playing aspects of being an RPG, with a game coming in a distant third. This is fantastic for immersion, but some gamers will find the price of entrance to be excessively costly. Amazingly, since the game's release, a hardcore gaming option has been introduced, upping the ante on realistic play by, among other things, hiding the combat reticule, eliminating quick travel, and requiring players to navigate by markers and the position of the sun by removing the in-game map. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, Please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, let's begin. Let's discuss the game. Bohemia is an area rich in culture, silver, and towering castles. Nestled in the center of Europe, the death of Emperor Charles IV, the kingdom's revered monarch, has thrown the kingdom into turmoil. Conflict, corruption, and discord are ripping the Holy Roman Empire apart. When Ceslas, one of Charles's sons, has inherited the throne, when Ceslas is a naive, self-indulgent, and unambitious ruler, unlike his father, Sigismund the Red Fox, when Ceslas's half-brother and king of Hungary, detects when Ceslas's weakness. Sigismund sails to Bohemia under the guise of goodwill and kidnaps his half-brother. Sigismund is now free to loot Bohemia and grab its riches because there is no ruler on the throne. You're Henry, the son of a blacksmith, and you're caught in the middle of it all. When a mercenary raid, ordered by King Sigismund himself, burns your village to the ground, your quiet life is destroyed. You, Henry, are one of the few survivors of the carnage, which is a cruel irony. You end up in the service of Lord Radzig Koblia, who is building a resistance to the invasion. Without a home, family, or future, fate forces forces you into this terrible battle and thrusts you into the midst of a blazing civil war where you help fight for Bohemia's future. The dedication of developers Warhorse Studios to its mission is unquestionable. The Czech company has rebuilt a significant portion of its own old rear garden. Players can walk through the muddy alleyways of straw, peasant villages, and lively walled towns, ride along horseback routes through scenic farmland hunt for game in sun-dappled forests teeming with birdsong, or ride along bridal paths through picturesque farmland. From the outside, remarkable castle cities appear large and ominous, yet on the inside, they are lively, active, and pleasantly colorful. 
In literature, history is frequently seen through a sepia lens, but this isn't the case here. Medieval Europe is alive and well. Warhorse drew in a plethora of academics to act as historical specialists and advisors on the project to ensure that players get the most accurate recreation of medieval life possible in Kingdom Come, an in-game codex fills with extensive stories of bohemian life, from historical people, conflicts and locales, to rules controlling everyday existence, religion, even how toilets and plumbing functioned back then, and everything in between. As Henry wanders the region and overhears bits of information, if Henry goes too long without washing, the citizens, especially the nobility's acute noses, will be less excited about him. Food will rot if not consumed soon. Guards will detain Henry if he is caught walking about town at night without a flashlight to guide him. And even the rapid travel mechanism will only get Henry to the intended area faster than normal as time passes and his energy and hunger levels fall. The list continues on and on, and it can be difficult to keep track of everything when you first start the game. But all of these intricacies are integrated in such a way that they quickly become second nature. The world of deliverance begs to be explored, and the game allows you to do it in a variety of ways. Henry's job resembles that of a squire or a page, as he runs errands for everyone from millers to lords while learning as he goes. You'll look for missing horses, solve crimes, defend villages, and fight in violent battles. Many problems can be addressed in a variety of methods, such as stealth, talking, or fighting your way into an opposing camp, and mastering talents such as reading or alchemy opens up even more options. In one endeavor to uncover heretics, a written confession is used to locate their secret place of worship. Henry will be absolutely baffled by the the cryptic metaphor that exposes its location if you haven't been working on his literacy. Whatever game you choose to play, swords will clash and blood will be spilled at some time. Combat serves as a useful barometer for War Horse's take on realism, incorporating real combat methods that players are inspired to learn through a distinctive system that allows them to strike, block, and perform combinations from five distinct angles. It's challenging, but rewarding, and it encourages the player to approach combat with caution that only a few other games do. Combating more than one opponent is incredibly difficult, unless you're riding a horse or using a bow to whittle down enemy ranks. Another nice detail is that duels aren't always life and death fights. Losing fighters have the option of surrendering to mercy, and the victor must determine whether or not to respond honorably. The main premise of fighting, which involves swords, axes, maces, spears, and other medieval equipment, is to move beyond hit or miss strikes. Henry, like his opponents, has five different hit zones that must be individually targeted. Strikes to the head, arms, and legs require various command inputs that consider the opponent's armor in each place, as well as whether the strike is being adequately blocked. With each hit performed and received, a stamina meter depletes, typically functioning as a buffer before damage begins to eat away at the health bar. It's a convoluted concept that takes a lot of time to master, and when you mix it with Henry's lack of combat skill and armor, early clashes against trained and equipped soldiers seem terribly unjust. Once Henry has attracted an opponent's notice, the game will not allow him to heal himself. Therefore, there is no way to heal by going to the pause menu and having a quick meal in the middle of a combat. These little details adds multiple layers to a world that is progressively developing as you play through it. Everything is governed by a deep simulation. You will be sentenced to prison if you are caught stealing. During a fist fight, if you unsheathe your sword, your opponent will back down and possibly apologize. If you've had a bath, nobles will be more likely to talk to you. People on the street will shout your name and sing your praises if your reputation in town is very good. You will wake up with a hangover if you drink too much. You'll make less noise while sneaking if you take off your clumsy plate armor. Food poisoning is caused by eating spoiled food. It helps that Henry is a likable protagonist. He isn't really interesting, but we believe that is the point. He's so ordinary ordinary, so plain, that his presence gives the story a solid, relatable base. He's just as shocked by everything as you are, as he reluctantly leaves his old life behind, becoming a servant for a lord who takes a liking to him and finding himself on the front lines of a horrific battle. But his passion and tenacity keep him afloat, and he's a good guide through the tangled culture and politics, harsh, unforgiving medieval society. Throughout the game, Henry learns a lot and even participates in a number of historical events. The 
the entire game is set against the backdrop of the fight for Bohemia's throne, as a sudden vacancy in the monarchy drives the region's noble houses into a flurry, all of whom play major roles and are surprisingly well fleshed out into chaos. The writing is excellent. Henry's interactions with the game's characters is very human, whether he's developing genuine friendships with them or deferring to them in emotional displays of respect. Several optional missions of the game exist only for the purpose of character development, resulting in some of the most honest and real connections we've seen in a long time between video game characters. It's a true tribute to War Horse's designers, particularly lead writer and game director Daniel Vavra, who have proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that realism can be just as enjoyable as fantasy fiction. But all of this comes at a price. Kingdom Come, like many other games with this degree of detail and ambition, is plagued by problems. The simulation is rich and complicated, but it also feels as if it could come crashing down at any moment. Characters becoming caught on walls or floating in mid-air in cutscenes are largely harmless, but there are occasions when it's more serious, such as when my archery opponent refused to take a shot, trapping me in an interminable limbo. Or the conversation that kept repeating the same three lines of dialogue indefinitely, and in some desktop crashes and other janky oddities, and you've got a game that's in desperate need of polish. The game's voice work and soundtrack greatly aids the cast of characters, as well as the general immersion in the world. The primary character cast sounds fantastic all around, from the calm and stately Sir Radzig to even Henry himself. The performers are completely convincing. Brian Blessed, a venerable Shakespearean actor, even makes an appearance at the end of the main campaign. The game's music, which consists of period-specific tunes played on authentic instruments, is equally amazing. One small gripe is that much of the music becomes monotonous after a while, especially for those who are trying to finish the game as quickly as possible. Even without accounting for the budget, Kingdom Come appears to be a fantastic film. The planet is alive and well, and it appears that most of it was handcrafted rather than computationally created. Towns appear to be of a good size. Granted, they may be smaller than they should be because we haven't identified each and every citizen and the military, as well as their housing spaces, but the world still feels real and lovely. What we have discussed so far may imply that Deliverance is a callous or cruel game. There are often sweet moments of love and joy among the spectators of war and death, and Henry himself is charming for a vengeful peasant. Deliverance isn't very interested in delving through the issues it raises. Henry sits down in a tavern to question a town priest about a murder in one odd incident. They talk about the importance of confession and how wealth corrupts people and societies. The evening devolves into an insane scene of rowdiness, culminating in Henry preaching the morning sermon because the priest is too intoxicated to do so. In a nutshell, this is the story of Deliverance. It wants us to take its medieval world seriously while also wanting it to be a fun place to play, and it is constantly attempting to strike a balance between those two aspects of its nature. It's easy to immerse yourself in its rich and lively medieval scenery, if you can accept its eccentricities. Kingdom Come is a truly satisfying role-playing game set in a complex, reactive universe, bugs and performance difficulties notwithstanding. There have been rumors that the gaming developer and ex-Netflix CEO Eric Barmack are working together. With Warhorse CEO Martin Freivaldsky, Barmack will produce the live-action version. Both studios are presently looking for screenwriters to work on the production. Kingdom Come Deliverance was praised by the ex-Netflix CEO. It's particularly intriguing that video games with rich narrative such as The Witcher and Kingdom Come Deliverance are remarkably flexible and local but global at the same time, he said. The Kingdom Come and Yakuza adaptations, he said, are part of a larger effort to deliver wonderful non-US worlds that are locally relevant but with the regional and worldwide popularity that players are seeking for. As they become more and more global. Kingdom Come has demonstrated that smaller games can compete with big-budget event games, he believes. All things considered, make sure to keep your eyes peeled out for the possible movie adaptation, and in the meantime, get this game and live out your fantasy of living in medieval times. And if it isn't a dream of yours, this game will definitely change that feeling by the end of its gameplay. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone. Boom! <laughs>